Welcome back to Let's Code. Today, we are going to take a look at the Rust Adventure 2048 workshop, which is written in Bevy 0.5. Today, Bevy 0.6 released. So we're going to clone the repo down, take a look at it, and upgrade from Bevy 0.5 to Bevy 0.6. On rustadventure.dev, when we do the workshop, the code is kept in a branch called steps. So I've converted over to that branch. And before we even get anything started here, I've opened VS Code, but I'm just going to uh, git checkout dash b a bevy 0.6 branch. So now we have all of the code and everything should run. Let's do a cargo run. And this should build the project. I'm on a Mac M1 today, so we may end up seeing a couple of new issues. So here we see our first error on uh, a Mac M1. It seems that shader C is not building for some reason. To get to the issue, I searched for Bevy M1, which resulted in a GitHub issue specifically for Apple Silicon support. Now, at the top of this issue, we can see that this was November 25th, 2020. This was a long time ago. So Bevy has had M1 support for quite a while at this point. And after scanning through the issue here, this was closed in 2020 and somebody else re-brought it up on January 6th, 2021. So this is actually the error that we are running into. And this person has done a bunch of things. They've reinstalled their operating system and whatnot. And there's a suggestion here, brew install CMake. So if we read the error that we have on the left here, searching for native shader C libraries on the system, use features build from source to force building from source code, can't find native shader library, can't find required command CMake is the actual error that we have. I might just need to install CMake on this system. And now when we cargo run, it seems we get a little bit further. So we're actually getting a couple of issues here. Uh, specifically, it looks like in Bevy easing or when we're compiling Bevy easing, we get a use of unstable library feature float interpolation. And that's this linear interpolate. That's this linear interpolation or lerp function. Why it's abbreviated like that, I don't know. <laughs> it's possible that doing cargo plus nightly run will fix this for us. And if we build with nightly, we can see that 2048 is fully working with bevy easings, and specifically the tile movement from tile to tile and in between is the bevy easings that we're looking at. So the game is totally working, as far as I can tell. We can do a new game, we can play, it keeps our high scores. Um, that's everything that we cover in the workshop. And we've changed none of the code so far. And I know for a fact that bevy needs to be updated. So we'll upgrade to 0 0.6. And let's also go do this the old fashioned way. Bevy Easings has a 0.4.1 that is out, but it was published three months ago, so probably hasn't been updated for Bevy 0.6. Let's hope there's no nothing that needs to happen there, but we could always go to the Git repo and see if they're working on it. Since there doesn't seem to be any other major updates, and really we don't have many dependencies in this application, we're just going to bump up to Bevy 0.6 and do a cargo run again. So the issue here is actually going to be that Bevy easing 0.4.1 doesn't work with Bevy 0.6 yet. So what I'm gonna do is comment that out and go into our code here. And we use easings here. And I don't think we use easings in the other file. So we only use easings in main because this is all game UI in the UI.rs file. So I'm gonna comment out Bevy easings. We're gonna get rid of the easings plugin here and Materials, placeholders, looks like it's having an issue. I'm just scrolling through. This looks like materials might have an issue at some point. That might be a bevy related thing. This render tiles function is probably also going to need some uh, updates. For us, see metadata locator, no metadata found. DX12 API enabled on non Windows OS. If your project is not using resolver equals two in cargo.toml, it should. Okay, so this is going to be our first major issue. When upgrading to Bevy 0.6, they also upgraded to Rust 2021. And we were saying that we were using 2018 in the Cargo Toml. So Resolver 2 is a new type of Cargo Resolver for dependencies and features. Um, and it's something that we will need with Bevy moving forward because they have, I believe, updated and there is no sort of like backward compatibility because there doesn't really need to be. And now everything has been installed, but we do have a number of issues. These issues look pretty familiar to me. The trait bevy prelude component is not implemented for position is something that I expected to see. And it's probably uh, one of the only changes we're going to have to make here. So 
we removed bevy easing, so we no longer have ease two here. So we'll just comment this all out for a second. And I believe we can do something like this to keep the functionality around. Which brings us to all of the entities and structs that we're using. So uh, bevy 0.6 no longer automatically derives component for your components. So we've got a giant list of components here, including points and uh, position, and I bet you new tile event is in here. Board, more position, points, position, tile text, uh, best score display, so we're gonna have to do this in the other file as well. So all of this combines to say that we basically need to derive component here. Now we do have the bevy prelude in scope, so I believe that component will be in the prelude. So let's do this on board, let's do this on points, let's do this on position. And this isn't changing any uh, actual functionality here. This is just doing what was happening in bevy 0.5 automatically for us and updating it to the explicit derive that we need to now include. I'm gonna assume score display does as well because they're both used for the same thing. Uh, method not found in a board reference. Another thing is that all of these systems uh, no longer need to be dot systems. So we'll remove all of those. And I think the same somewhere in here. So all of those can go away. Um, app dot build is giving us an issue for some reason. Let's see if we can find that. Function or associated item not found. So app build went away. So maybe we'll be able to find it in here. So I'm on the bevy 0.6 news release and I'm just searching for build, uh, which they show here. So I'm not sure why it's not considering it Ooh, there we go, new. So if we use new there, then we're good. So most notably, when we go to create the material field on our sprite bundles, that field seems to no longer exist. So avail available fields are sprite, transform, global transform, texture, and visibility. So let's go back to the announcement post and see what we can find. It looks like there's something here about no need to manage sprite materials. Their texture handle is now a direct component and color can now be set directly on the sprite component. So this is the texture handle, with the asset server loading it in. I don't know what type the texture handle is, so we'll have to figure that out. So let's take a look at sprite new. I don't see anything about sprite in the upgrade guide, so let's go to the documentation itself. So at docs.rs slash bevy, we can take a look for the sprite. And it looks like there's color, flip X, flip Y, and custom size. It doesn't look like the new function is here anymore. So maybe we'll do default. Our VEC2 now becomes the custom size of the sprite, and the material becomes the color. Now an interesting note is that what we used to have here is a handle, because materials.board is a handle to a color. But now color wants an actual color, not a material. So it does look like this is an opportunity for a refactor, whether we const create these materials or we change a little bit about how we're handling them, because the sprite does want a color and not a handle to a material. So we have to comment out materials. I've commented out the from world implementation for materials, and I've made materials a const that is just a set of colors. And now we can remove the materials from our spawn board command, and we can just call materials.board here. And now we need to follow up with all of the other sprite bundles in this application to change the material to being a color on the sprite and to change sprite new uh, to be a struct construction instead. And with flip X and flip Y, we will just make that a sprite default. And again, we remove materials from the query. We no longer need materials in spawn tile. Remove materials from the query. Remove materials from spawn tile. Spawn tile no longer needs materials. This tile needs to become color on the new sprite. And remember now that we're using this const, we just have the color to be passed into color. And the custom size is the size of our sprite now. Now I believe we don't need this expect anymore because single will always fail. So there's a couple new changes like that as well. So this expect no longer needs to be here because single will fail. Just scrolling through the application anywhere we have dot single or dot single mute, we now don't need to do that anymore. This is a quite nice ergonomic improvement in my opinion because I have these <laughs> all over the place. Okay, that was a reasonable amount of changes. So let's see what else we've got here. Can't find type app builder in scope. Yeah, that's because app builder is no longer a thing and this is just app, I believe. We have a setup UI here that takes a materials. So we'll have to do this again. 
Also, Node Bundle no longer has a material, so it seems like material was removed from pretty much every API that we were using it in. So we'll have to figure out where to put those. I think that what I'll do in this case is move it out to a new file. Mod colors, use colors, and then we need to create the colors file. I'll drop this in here. This will be pub. These will all be pub. Um, realistically, we can probably just export these with names now. We probably don't need those materials in here. We do need to bring color into scope for now. I'm not going to make any refactoring changes here because when upgrading from one version of a piece of software to another, it's often nice to keep it in the same, uh, the same behavior that you had originally. And then once you get a successful working build in the new library or the new version, then you can go back and refactor things. So the only things I'm refactoring here are things that need to be refactored. So I'll bring in create colors materials here. And I'm not sure why scoreboard is having an issue. Color materials, private field. So these all need to be pub now if we're going to use them like this. So node bundle, let's go check out node bundle. Node bundle has a color on it now, which is a UI color, not a, not a color. Interesting. I'll have to go back and find out if UI color is a new thing or if it's just something that we are wrapping a color in. So that means here on node bundle, we have color which is materials.none, but this needs to be a UI color. So that should work for us. This also needs to be color and it also needs to be a UI color. And then same thing here, color, UI color. I wonder how many more of these we have. Do material colon. This seems like the last one. So I'll just do this manually again, color, UI color, material. Get rid of the clone because we don't need it. And we run this. And now we have some query issues and cannot be named the same as a constant. But mute materials. And instead of changing anything here, I'm going to call this button materials. And now our button system should still be running as expected. Here's a single that we didn't hit before. So let's remove that. These queries need to be adjusted. And then the scoreboard needs an adjustment as well. The trait bevy prelude into system is not implemented for a couple of lifetimes here. Function bevy res game query set. So it looks like scoreboard needs to have some adjustments to its queries. So I wonder if this query set isn't valid anymore or if we need to manually call it for scoreboard. So let's go take a look at query sets. Query set declare query state instead of query due to system param lifetime split. So that's something worth reading. Query sets now need to specify their queries with query state instead of query, which looks like a pretty simple change for us. So query, query, state. We still have other issues, but if we go up here, we see that the scoreboard system issue is now solved. Uh, Q0 and Q1. That is interesting. So it looks like there's no Q0 mute anymore. So I wonder if we just remove this Q0, Q1, mute. Single mute will be the same thing as single before, so we don't need to unwrap it ourselves. Let's see what this creates a temporary. Okay, so let's do, let's not name this Q1 if I'm going to name it Q0. <laughs> let's do Q0 here. And then that's an interesting, oh, this needs to be mutable. That makes sense. Okay, so now we can do the same thing here. Name this Q1, let mute Q1 equals this. And that is specifically um, solving the issue of creates a temporary, which is freed while still in use which is basically like we create something and then we throw away before we actually need to use it. I don't need to figure out like exactly why that's happening because right now I know that we can just store the temporary in Q0 and then choose to use that as many times as we want or you choose to use the query as many times as we want. So I'm okay with that for now and I'll come back and I'll probably refactor this after we get 0 0.6 working. So at that state, we're pretty close to this working or we should be. So hopefully this works. You, see, you can see that we don't have any easings anymore, uh, which is important. You see that also there's a bug in which some of the tiles are missing their white backgrounds. I wonder when that happens. That's a bug that I'll have to go in and figure out. Eight and four. It seems almost random. It's definitely interesting. It could be 
related to the materials stuff that we just did. So I'll go in and I'll have to figure out, maybe we put a none where a white should have been. But otherwise it seems like everything's going fine. The game still works. We're basically upgraded to 0 0.6. I now get to do the work of rewriting all of the material for this workshop. I'm gonna go back and review the new APIs in 0 0.6, if there are any. Like, I think that the, the materials change here is a pretty major change for us. It also makes it simpler in the course. And since the, the purpose of the course isn't necessarily to teach you about handles, I think taking that out is quite nice, actually. There's a couple of other things. The single dot expect is something that we ran into quite a bit, right? So we have this board that we have. So we're querying for the board. We only have one board. We only ever have one board, no matter what. So now we can just say it's a, it's a single result without having to do a dot expect. That's not too big of a change. That's just one less thing to explain. This query set changes a little bit. And I wanna dive deeper into why these query set changes happened before I push uh, new material out. This seems like an impactful change. The purpose for splitting the lifetimes in the system parameter is the piece that I'm going to dive into more and see if we should refactor this at all to make it line up with where Bevy is heading. But overall, we have a working application other than that one glitch, which is kind of like every once in a while, a tile will not have a white background. Other than that, I think everything works. Um, and that's, uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of casual look into what I have to do for the code samples, at least, when a library makes updated breaking changes for Rust Adventure. So this happens anytime a library releases a new breaking version. Uh, sometimes these changes are small. I feel like this one felt pretty, pretty reasonable. Uh, the changes feel good from the library perspective, from using Bevy perspective. And I get to remove a couple things from the workshop. And then there's a couple changes that uh, I need to dive deeper into to understand at a deeper level. But that's that. And uh, thanks for hanging out. And I will catch you in the next one.